Welcome to the St. Michael Advent Podcast Series. My name is Bob Johnston, and I'll be leading our meditation today. Our theme this Advent is hope. May you be blessed for the Christian journey. The glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. A reading from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verses 1 to 8. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist. He ate locusts and wild honey, and he proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I'm not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. Here ends the reading. Mark's gospel moves quickly. In this opening passage, we get a link to the prophecy of Isaiah. And then John the Baptist and then Jesus is baptized all in eight verses. Today, I want to focus for our meditation on Jesus' baptism and our own baptism. Let's set the scene. You have this wild man, John, out in the wilderness. He's got on a leather girdle, leather belt, eating locusts and strange things, but he's getting lots of buzz. He really is the reality star of the day. People are flocking to see him. In the desert, he is preaching a baptism of repentance. He's drawing on a Jewish practice of baptizing Gentile converts and washing. Meanwhile, John is talking about the great one who's coming, who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. Then Jesus shows on the scene. John resists baptizing him in other accounts, but here he promptly baptizes Jesus. As he does, the Spirit descends on Jesus And there's a voice from heaven that says, You are my son, the beloved. With you I'm well pleased. It is quite the scene. Take that in for a bit. Okay, why did Jesus do that? Why? He was sinless. I want to throw out a few reasons to ponder. Perhaps he did it to signal a decisive moment. A single decisive moment. He's been waiting for 30 years to start his public ministry, and it's time, and here's a signal. A second reason is that he wanted to show solidarity with sinners. He's called to move people to God. As St. Augustine said in the 5th century, he did it to draw us to his baptism. A third reason, perhaps, is just he wanted for others to see the Holy Spirit come on him through this action. Notice in all of this that the whole Trinity is involved. Jesus, the Son, receives. The Holy Spirit descends. The Father calls out. Jesus is anointed for his ministry. We could go deeper and keep going. But let me say a few things connecting this to our baptism. Baptism involves repentance and grace. And Jesus completes this. He, in solidarity, calls us to repent. And he is the source of grace. St. Ambrose in the 4th century said, Neither repentance avails without grace, nor grace without repentance. For repentance must first condemn sin, that grace may blot it out. So then John, who was a type of law, came baptizing for repentance, while Christ came to offer grace. As we enter into baptism, we are adopted as God's children through grace. God the Father sees us in Christ. Bishop N.T. Wright says, we hear these words, You are my dear, dear child. 
I'm delighted with you. All of that doesn't matter what we've done up to that point because it's all about grace. Our perspective on life then changes. We seek what God wants. It's a paradigm shift. Mother Teresa of Calcutta said, We were not created to be successful, but obedient. With this new paradigm shift, with this new change, we live into a new perspective. That's part of what Christmas brings and which we are preparing for in Advent. And in a sense, all of life is baptism and the hope it brings. We find this new perspective and engage life on the other side of baptism. In baptism, we go into the dark, chaotic waters and we come out into light and the true life of purpose and passion. Part of the hope of Advent calls us to again repent and embrace grace and purpose. This is an ongoing aspect of living out our baptismal call. Let's pray. Gracious Lord, we thank you that in grace you call us to a new life as your children. During this season of Advent, help us to repent from the things we know are not right and hold to your grace. May we live into our baptism call and seek your ways. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please join me as we continue with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O God of peace, who has taught us that in returning and rest we shall be saved, in quietness and in confidence shall be our strength. By the might of your Spirit, lift us, we pray, to your presence, where we may be still and know that you are God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Have a great day.